Did you know that you don't get all of the electricity from your charger into your battery? Let's look at charging loss. A couple of weeks ago, I released a video comparing the cost of gasoline to the cost of electricity and compared uh, my Tesla Model 3 to a BMW 3 Series. And there were a lot of comments in that video, one of which I'll have a correction because I did not think that the BMW, I didn't think that the BMW needed premium gas. It's obvious that, of course, it, it needs premium. So I'm going to update those calculations and I'm going to do it in this video. Another comment was, that I wasn't factoring in uh, insurance costs and things like that. And that's, that's going to go into a cost of ownership video that will be coming out before the end of the calendar year. But it takes a lot more time to research it, etc. This video is not cost of ownership. This is just gonna look specifically at the other comment that you, the viewers brought up, which is factoring in charging loss. So first let's take a look at what charging loss is. So not all of the electricity from your power source is going to make it into your battery to be able to be used later on. First off, the battery can only store power in DC, making sure that I'm reading this correctly. When it's plugged in at home, that's AC. So the car has an AC to DC converter and that conversion process takes up a little bit of energy. Also, there's heat that comes in with the electricity and that heat bleeds off some of the electricity as well. There's resistance in the charging cable that is going to cause the power to, uh, to just be lost and kindly evaporate. So what does it boil down to in terms of actual percentages on this Tesla Model 3? So I tracked my power usage over five days, taking records of how much power the car said it had used on that day's drive uh, by using the trip odometer. And then I took a reading from my Wallbox level two charger at home when I unplugged the following morning as to how much power the Wallbox actually delivered. On day one, I drove 95 miles and the car said it used 22 kilowatts. However, the Wallbox said it's it delivered 25.7 to recharge. On day two, I drove 41 miles. The car said it used 10 kilowatt hours, but the wall box the next day delivered 12.3 kilowatt hours. Day three, I drove 60 miles, used 13 kilowatt hours, but the wall box delivered 15.7. Day four, I did a lot more driving. I drove 126 miles, used 29 kilowatt hours, according to the Tesla. But according to the wall box, the next day it delivered 32.7. And on the fifth day, I drove 58 miles with the car claiming that it used 12 kilowatt hours and then the wall box needing 14.5 kilowatt hours to recharge. Each of those days, the car's charge limit was set to 100%. This is a 2022 standard range rear wheel drive Model 3. That means it has an LFP battery, so I charge it to 100%. So let's look at this in terms of percentages. On day one, 85.6% of the electricity from the wall box actually made it into the battery. On day two, that number goes down to 81.3%. Day three, 82.8%, but on day four, the day I drove 126 miles, 88.65% of the power from the wall box uh, was used while I was, while I was driving. Day five, it was 82.76. This tells me that I'm using a lot of power when the car does idling. Idling is what my Tessie app uh, calls it when the car's not driving anywhere, but it's using electricity. And even if the car is sitting in a parking lot, it is going to count that as an idle. It's September in Texas, which means it's still in the mid nineties. And I have cabin overheat protection on. You may choose with your car to not have cabin overheat protection on. I like to leave it on. And sometimes I will also turn the air conditioner on so that the car is not boiling hot when I get into it. The energy that is used to power that uh, climate control is going to count in an idle and it's not going to show up as power used on the drive. So some of that power is going to idling. What is probably the most 
accurate uh, measurement for charging loss is that, that day number four, the day that I drove 126 miles, I think it was, 126 miles and used 29 kilowatts, but only needed 32.7 to fully recharge. And that was the day where the percentage was the highest at 88.65%. That day I had one idle that used one tenth of a kilowatt hour. So almost all but one tenth of a kilowatt hour on that drive went to the driving. I unplugged before I left and I plugged in as soon as I got home. So that's going to be the most accurate gauge on charging loss. But to be fair, since I am going to be keeping those features turned on that are going to drain some of my power when the car is idling, I'm going to have to pay for that electricity anyway, just as if I sat in a gasoline powered car and let the air conditioning cool it off. With the engine running, I'd have to pay for the gasoline that it burned. So the average of those five days was a total of 380 miles, which uh, 86 kilowatt hours used according to the car, and 100.9 kilowatt hours delivered according to the wall box. That averages out to 85.23%. Now I'm gonna use that 85% figure to see how that affects cost. Based off of what the car said it used, the efficiency was 4.4186 miles per kilowatt hour. Yet based on what the wall box delivered over those five days, it was down to 3.766 miles per kilowatt hour. And again, a lot of that's not used in driving. Now, I want to take this and apply it to the lifetime of my ownership of this car. When we purchased this car back in February, it had 57,344 miles on it. I reset the trip the day that we drove it off of the lot. And since then, in 207 days of ownership, we've put on 14,599 miles. 14,599 divided by 207 comes out to 70.5 miles per day. Over the lifetime of the car, if I take that 85% figure of charging loss, my efficiency would be 4.156 miles per kilowatt hour. But factoring in that 85% um, or the 15% charging loss, it drops down to 3.54 miles per kilowatt hour. My electricity charge is 14 cents per kilowatt hour and rounding for cents means that with charging loss, my cost per mile goes from 3 cents a mile to four cents a mile. At 70.5 70 miles a day on average, that means it's costing me $2.78 to drive this car each day compared to $2.37 if I'm not accounting for the charging loss. Taking that number of days and multiplying it by seven gives me $19.49 a week for electricity to drive this car compared to $16.58 not accounting for charging loss. Taking those weeks and multiplying them by 52, I get $1,013.65 a year uh, compared to $862.24 over the course of a year if I don't factor in the uh, charging loss to idles and power conversion. But cost per month is going to come down to, that it took that $1,000 figure, divided it by 12, and not counting for charging loss, $71.85 factoring in charging loss, $84.47. So a little less than $13 a month is what it costs me to convert the uh, electricity from DC to AC, have power get lost in my cable and keep some comfort features turned on in the car. And it still only comes out to about $84 a month for me to drive what is on average 2,138 miles. That to me seems pretty cost effective, but what if I compare it to that BMW Model 3 I used in my other comparison? Now a quick check on Gas Buddy shows that gas prices have gone down a little bit since I made that video. The price of regular unleaded, the cheapest one I could find, was $2.55.9 a gallon. However, many of you pointed out that I mistakenly quoted regular gasoline for a BMW 330i. That car takes premium gasoline. That same gas station, premium gasoline is $3.25.9 a gallon. So I'm gonna show both, uh, just in you know, case the driver doesn't wanna put premium unleaded in their Beamer. So 
uh, at an average fuel economy, according to Fuely, of 27.9 miles per gallon, if someone puts regular gas into that 330i, they're going to be using about 9 cents per mile. But if they put premium in there, it goes up to 11.68 or 12 cents per mile. So big difference between regular unleaded and premium. Over the course of a day at 70.5 miles that I average on this Model 3, that would be $6.46 for regular unleaded or $8.23 for premium. Over the course of the year, $2,997.32 for premium or $2,353.21 for regular unleaded. Per month, that is $196.10 to put regular unleaded into that BMW 330i, but if you do it, it suggests, and you put premium in, that's gonna be $249.78 over the course of a month. That is a difference. If, if I look at the cost of premium gasoline over the course of a month in that BMW, and the course of electricity from me charging at home with my Model 3, accounting for the charge loss, it is still $165.31 per month cheaper to charge the Tesla Model 3 than to fuel that BMW. If I put regular gas into the BMW, it's, um, it only comes down, that difference only comes down by about $53. So uh, it's still a tremendous savings. Over the entire course of the year, the yearly difference is $1,983.67 between the same amount of miles projected using premium gasoline in a BMW 330i compared to charging at home in the Tesla Model 3, even accounting for the charging loss. I can do a lot with that car for $1,900. I've put a set of tires on it a couple of months ago that cost a third of that. So um, even if I need a set of tires each year, which hopefully I don't, but I'll update you if I do, it's still going to be, uh, it's still gonna save me money in terms of the cost of the fuel. Now, as far as the cost of the insurance, that is going to be a topic of another video. It's going to take a lot of time for me to properly research that with competitors and comparative cars. We'll do that with our Bolt. We'll do that with the Tesla. We'll do that with their closest internal combustion engine analogs. But we've got a big trip coming up, so that video is going to be a couple of months before I get it out. But it will come out. And if you're saying, but you haven't talked about it, I told you at the beginning I wasn't going to. I'll do that in another video. That one's coming. Uh, our trip is coming up. We're gonna be coming out with a six part video series on that. The first one is gonna be trip planning that'll be out next week. And then we're covering our epic, what could be 2,600 miles, depending on how much we drive around when we get there, it might be 3,000 miles that we're gonna be putting on this Tesla in the course of a week going from North Texas to, Virgi to Northern Virginia. Uh, check that one out. Be sure you subscribe so that you can see when those are coming. Thanks for watching.